Hello to everyone. This is the third video tutorial of uh, Solar Envelope Tools. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create reverse solar envelopes, which is a non classical way to calculate these uh, solar envelope volumes. This is based on a subtractive approach that instead of calculating the maximum height of each grid point, we are actually quantifying how many times each of the, our cells of the theoretical block is hit by a sun ray. Uh, so depending on the obstruction index we are going to choose, we can have different reverse solar envelopes. So let's stop talking and showing how to calculate this reverse solar envelope. Okay, so we need to set up first the model. So in this case, we are going to to consider a plot in the, mid in the middle of a high dense urban area located in Amsterdam, Netherlands. The analysis period is from February 1st to 21st March, according to the European standard. And the daily requirements, we are going to check out how, what happens with the reverse solar envelope if we are using different sun, uh, different daily requirements. Let's say 1.5, 3, and 4 hours per day. Okay, we need to set up, we need to generate all the sun vectors associated to this uh, analysis period. We need to introduce February. the end and month 21st and the end, end hour the time step uh, we can select as previous tutorials uh, two so w one sun position per half an hour okay so once we have this we need to uh, sele uh, generate the select uh, we need to sort and select the sun vectors according to different uh, criteria so for instance in this case, we are going to select a uh, control geometry based on core. This is the time, the same time step. You have to remember this. The control geometry in this case, we are going to select two, which is uh, the designer could sell, uh, define the design building core. In this case, we are going to create a core, actually. So we can even do it like this, or for any shape. So for instance, we can create this, this building core, or even this one. OK, we can put this uh, core here. And we can introduce this core as one closed core, the sine core here. OK, so basic information. Again, we need to mesh the breadth. Uh, context, windows, and plot. Uh, also, the obviously, the maximum height in this case is uh, this is going to be 100. As previous tutorials, you can change this value and see what happens with the reverse solar envelope. It's really fun. And we need to define also the vector cell. In this case, since the solar ordinance are based on a minimum number of sun hours per day, so this is the option number one. And the vector type, in this case, we are going to, we need to select 
uh, vector vector type uh, related to uh, control geometry number two. So, for example, we are going to select the number eight, for instance. All right. Now we can see uh, the first generate generation of the cells and back and also almost forgot we need to define the number of uh, hours per day of sunlight uh, we are going to we can begin with this 1.5 which is the mini minimum uh, level of solar access according to the European standard of daylight in buildings all right so we can actually generate all of this. The number of windows in this case is uh, seven, 78, which is pretty much done the previous tutorials. But at the same time, we are not using a lot, um, a really high time step. So should be okay for the computational time. As you can see here, these are the selected sum vectors. Um, of course, for different uh, requirement, this number of uh, sun rays will be larger. Well, in this case, the design core, this ha this has one option. Um, one way to s realize which locations of this design core is viable we can we can use another component called design course generator in order to but you have we have to introduce the visible sun rays also the the time step and the vector cell in this case is one vector sum is the same is in this case equal to 1.5 let's put this uh, as a list just to make sure that everything would be okay anyway you will you will get an error if this is not uh, intro uh, input properly this plot also oh, don't conf don't be confused about the and this this uh, this is the design core and this is the plot the max height is the same and the, the, the design core is this one actually the design core let's uh, use five meters for instance let's use eight eight meters and set it set this to run this is generating the design course inside the plot and also the sun rays that are around just around but not touching the design core so this information is the sun vectors and these are the se uh, selected sun rays we have to use this component auxiliary component to select our preferred design core select the design core within the whole viable ones we can select for instance the first one viable or the this number depends of course on the offset of offset values and uh, also the plot and um, the relative uh, how uh, how the design core is fitting the plot so yeah there are a lot of things that you can actually we can even extrude this
Well, this this uh, from all the design course, there are some vectors and some rays associated to this design core. So firstly, we will generate all the design cores viable with all the sun rays are related to this design course. We need to input, of course, the visible sun rays from this component, which is really important. So uh, in this case, you are seeing the visible sun rays, which are all of these. So you are input in this component, all these sun rays. Now we have to generate the design course. So the number of viable design cores, let's see them. These are the viable ones. Only 44% of the geometrically viable design cores are also viable in terms of solar access. You can see the core of the building, of the new building. This auxiliary tool is uh, selecting the selected sum vectors associated to this core actually actually this other output is the the sun rays associated to these uh, sum vectors so we can check it out and that's it any of these sun rays hit the design core so this is the main advantage of this component. It allows you to, to guarantee that the design core is viable and you don't need to iterate to obtain this. Well, the last two components are the reverse solar envelope generator itself. So we can input this uh, selected some vectors and the typical, the typical things uh, as the plot and the grid type. This component is pretty, it's pretty fast in comparison with uh, the solar envelope generator, which is this one, because of the algorithm. Okay, so we can select like five or even, even three meters each and the floor height four meters, for instance. Um, the max height should be should be the same. It's the same case study. And also the windows. So we can at this point generate the reverse solar envelope. Let's display some. information we have it now not even one minute we have 25 floors in the maximum for the design core and we have this is the reverse solar envelope so the design core is within the reverse solar envelope this is as expected and now in order to visualize this solar envelope in a proper way we have to select so these are only the the only th cells from the theoretical volume and they are not hit by any sun rays. But what happens if, uh, as a designer, you are not really such a strict for the solar access uh, regulation? So you can allow certain 
flexibility for the design. Let's say that you allow allow mm, 30 hits per cell as maximum. So you will have another s reversal envelope. Obstruction index, um, we can generate these reversal envelopes like for different obstruction angles with this tool which is called reversal envelope selector. Actually you can see the volume the, the volume and also the cell cells. In this case these are this could be a mesh for, in, for instance. So you can see how the mesh is changing for different when you are uh, assuming different obstruction maximum obstruction index says so you can see obviously a uh, infinite number the higher the number is this one the reversal envelope is closer to the theoretical volume of course because you are not being really strict about the solar regulation so Basically, you can compare if the volume uh, taking into account a really huge value, like 200 hits. This is the theoretical volume. And um, when we are decreasing the maximum obstruction index, you have the reversal envelope by definition. Um, you have also the information which is the same as this one actually and you can also have uh, the trim reversal envelope only points connected direct vertically with the plot We are going to select as a design strategy. We are going to calculate the centroid of this curve. So we are going to maintain the same core, but different requirement. In this case, we are going to internalize this point. Why? Because we are going to generate here the cell, the selected sum vectors in another way. Instead of using this intermediate stage to generate the reversal envelope, we can also use the selected sum vectors here to generate the solar envelope, the reversal envelope in this case. Um, we can see the selected sun rays with with this option. Now we have to think about the, the control geometry now is a point which is a reference point of the plot in this case is this. Um, we don't need to input the design core here because we are going we are going to use the design design core eliminate it and input the design point. Now we can generate actually the selected sum vectors in this way but take care and double check always the vectors type because the vectors type all uh, normally depends on the type of control ge of the control geometry so 
you can, in this case, we are going to use this, uh, the method number six, which is really allowing a lot of volume because it's focusing on the on sun rays, not in uh, intersect intersecting the the maximum boilable volume with larger sun elevation first and then some vector and then some vectors intersect intersecting the maximum vo volume volume so so we can generate now the selected sun vectors the only disadvantage of this uh, of do, of doing it like this with the re reference point in instead of generating all the design pipe what happens if we try to maintain this location for this core but different requirement so this is another thing we are going to increase the number of sun hours per day and see what happens with the selected sun rates this is a faster way to realize uh, if it's possible or not and if it's possible and if you want to if you want to know which flexibility you have you can use this design core generator actually but for example there is no comparison in step in, in terms of time because this is after 16 seconds you have the, an idea where to put your your design core so i w i will maintain it like like here i can actually through this volume again so it seems like like, like it's possible in this sense so let's let's maintain this and let's generate the the new reverse solar envelope we have here after 15 seconds the reverse solar envelope is this one as we did before we can actually see what happens if we what happens if we select different maximum obstruction indexes you can see the reverse solar envelope how these hollows allow the solar access fulfillment of these windows and still we have a really uh, this is the cell ratio which is like that means that the 70 percent 70 percent of the of the theoretical volume as you can see with this tutorial all these different generations are really can be really flexible but at the same time tricky because without playing with these tools we cannot see the advan the, the advantages of using one method or another so in this case for instance we have this layer which is totally so we you can see the difference between one method or another and in terms of computational time also it matters what methods uh, are you using to generate the reverse solar envelope but of course uh, this reverse solar envelope allows more uh, uh, flexibility in terms of the design because not only you can just uh, place a uh, different course, but also different uh, methods to generate the uh, sun rays. So this could lead into really different solutions for the design. Um, so this is the, the end of the third tutorial. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.